Please pray with me. May these words that I speak be grounded in my soul, encouraged by the God presence in me. And may these words that you hear be captured by your soul, enlivened by the God presence in you. Amen. Last Sunday, for those of you that were here, uh, I, you will know that I turned the character of John the Baptist on its head, suggesting that he wasn't the wild and angry man of the Gospels, but was rather a compassion-filled man who became the light of peace in a dark world, the kind of leader that would attract Jesus. This morning, I am suggesting that we need to do something similar with Jesus' mother, Mary. Perhaps it is time to bring Mary down off the lofty pedestal of gentle purity where she has been imprisoned by literature and allow her back into the reality of who she actually might have been. After all, what do we really know about Mary. The earliest writings, the letters of Paul, make reference to Jesus having a mother, but she doesn't even have a name. In Mark, the earliest of the Gospels, where there are no birth or childhood stories, Jesus is called the son of Mary and brother to James and Joseph. This occurs in chapter 6, so it's not even near the beginning, but it, it happens when Jesus returns home to Nazareth and is not welcomed. This same Mary is named as the mother of James and Joseph at the foot of the cross. Matthew and Luke, writing decades later, affirm Mary as the mother of Jesus and provide her with a husband, but they do little to bring light to her own character. I want to suggest this morning that we know more about Mary by what is not said than what is said. The reality is that Mary was a young, unmarried, peasant girl who finds herself pregnant. Pregnant in a culture that would shun her or worse because of her predicament. We could not even begin to imagine the difficulty this would place her in let alone understand how she would manage to survive the ordeal. And this is not mere speculation on my part. The reality is that in Mark's Gospel, Jesus is referred to as the Son of Mary. In this culture, this was never, never the way a man was addressed publicly unless he had no father. It would always be in public, Jesus, the son of Joseph, Jesus, the son of John, Jesus, the son of Je Zebedee, or whoever the person was son of. Yet somehow, despite this, despite the odds, Mary and Jesus survived. And this, I would say, could not have happened if Mary was unable to love deeply and unconditionally. Mary... I say this because can we even begin to imagine what life would have been like for Mary? The struggle, the hardship, the public derision. And yet she survived, <coughs> and so did Jesus. Her very survival tells us of her strength, her perseverance, her determination, qualities not possible without deep deep love. And then she raises this young boy only to watch him leave, leave his family, leave his community in search of truth, in search of God. And by his actions, she would face again the criticism and the shaming of her community. Nobody ever left. And still, she survived. Mary survived and would make the journey to be with her beloved son at his death. 
death by crucifixion, which would bring even more shame to her personally. This is not the traits of a gentle and meek maiden dressed in blue, which is what we typically do. No, it is strength and fortitude of a determined, determined young woman. Now, it is not likely that Mary was actually visited by an angel, as was shown in the story this morning. And even if she was, we certainly have no idea what that conversation might have been. But it is this strength of character that I suggest she possessed that allows me to embrace Luke's words offered by Mary, even though they are not actual history. When Mary says, but those who know their emptiness can rejoice in love's fullness. I know from personal experience, as I'm sure do most of you, that it is when we find ourselves in difficulty, in grief, in challenge and struggle, it is there that we most fully open to the love that is present within us. We touch that somehow. Richard Rohr speaks of this love within us as both our personal identity and our connection to the greater love, the way of God. And he says this, love is not something you can bargain for, nor is it something you can attain or work up to, because love is your very structural and essential identity. When you are living in conscious connection with this loving inner presence, you are in your true self. God is forever united to this love within you. It is your soul, the part of you that always says yes to God. It is Mary's connection to her own loving inner presence that allows her in these circumstances to say yes to God. It is this connection to our loving inner presence, as Isaiah says in the reading this morning, that opens our blind eyes to see a, to a new way of seeing, to open our deaf ears to a new way of hearing, that causes water to spring from our dry souls and shows us a highway, a way to live in this world. Sally McShane, a uh, United Church minister um, who's uh, in the Lower Mainland, she actually uh, was at First United in uh, East Vancouver for a number of years. Anyway, she, she shares this story. Uh, this is a true story, by the way. When great Granny Rose died in August, her family found that she had requested in her will that no matter when she died, her funeral would have five Christmas carols. Three carols were to be joyful, and the service was to end with silent night and away in a manger. No one was surprised. The funeral began with angels we have heard on high, just like we sang this morning. People sang the glorias tentatively at first, as though they were dishonoring God to sing out of season. But soon they started to feel the Christmas spirit. Everyone remarked on how she would have loved to be at her funeral. <laughs> Someone said she was there for sure, rocking with the angels. Joy to the world was her favorite. Joy is more than a happy smile or laugh, she would say. Joy is the soul's natural response to God's presence no matter the challenges of the day. Great Granny had read her Bible every day. She said, I love to impress the ministers with my knowledge. <laughs> but everyone knew she read it because what she read gave her strength and courage. 
Her husband had died young and she had raised her children alone. And was anyone surprised that she had written her own eulogy? No. Simple and sweet, this is what it said. Mary Louise Rose loved God and God loved her. Mary Louise Rose loved Jesus and his mom and they returned the favor. She gave thanks every day for the family God had given her. She loved her kids, grandkids, and her great-grandkids. And they loved her. Love is key. Amen. That hot August day, with the church doors open to let in the breeze, the sweet message of silent night drifted out the doors and everyone received the gift of blessing, of blessed enduring joy. It was great Granny Rose's one last gift to her family and friends. Love is key. Like Mary and like great Granny Rose, we too have within us the capacity to love every day more fully and more deeply. May we open to our own loving inner presence and discover there our true self. For it is there, <coughs> it is there that we will find ourselves being the light of love. Amen.